Action Commander is an add-on by Blender Boy that makes working with Blender Actions a much more pleasant experience. You can create a customized list of your own actions. You can apply them with a single click. And that automatically adjusts the frame range to be exactly as long as the active animation itself. Performing these seemingly simple tasks with the default Blender interface can be very time consuming, especially when dealing with a lot of animations within the same Blender file. So this add-on offers huge quality of life improvements and it is one of my top recommendations for animators, riggers and game developers. These are some of the add-ons by Blender Boy, and Action Commander is actually the successor of Frame Ranger. Frame Ranger was a big add-on, a bit like having three add-ons bundled into a single package, so Blender Boy decided to split them into smaller add-ons to make them easier to use and maintain. By the way, if you bought Frame Ranger in the past, you can get Action Commander for free using this code here. Now, one reason to keep using Frame Ranger is if you're using an older version of Blender, such as 3.6 and earlier, because Action Commander is only available for Blender 4 and later. This is a paid add on, it is $30. So you have to purchase it, and once you do, you can go to your orders and download the zip file, which is the actual add-on. Do not unzip this file. To install it, open Blender, go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, click Install, find the zip file that you downloaded, and install it, and activate the add-on. And if you expand the end panel, it will be here under Action Commander. If you now expand the add-on options, you can actually change the name of the panel. It is kind of long. So what I like to do is to change the category name to AC. You can leave the label as it is. And also here, this category I'll change to AC. And now I'll have a much smaller tab here in the end panel. Now let's see how we can work with the add-on. Here I have a rigged character. If I select the armature, it already has an active action. So I can go to AC, Action Commander, and the add-on has detected that there is an active action, so it will ask me to load it. I can load it, of course. But also, if I want to load more actions, because I have a lot of actions in this file, I can just press load, and then either load individual actions or click on load all. And that will place all of these actions in my action list. And then I can just select them, and that will activate the action and also adjust the frame range to be exactly as long as the actual action. Right? I can select this action or this one, and every time the frame range is adjusted. Just for reference, here is how to do this with the default Blender interface. I'll have to switch my editor here to Dope Sheet and then go to Action Editor, and then from this list of actions, I can select my action. And then I would have to go back to my timeline and adjust it to be 14 frames in this instance, right? Which is a lot of clicking compared to just a single click. Okay, so here we have the list of actions that I want to work with. I can always remove actions by clicking the X button here. The actions are still in the file and that can be seen here in the action bin. So the action commander contains the actions that I want to work with, but action bin will show me all available animations. And so if I want to actually delete one of these animations completely from the file, I can just press this dustbin button and it will warn me that I'm deleting this action from the file. I can press OK. And again, for a comparison, here is how it is done by default in Blender. I have to go to my outliner and switch it to Blender file. At least that is how I do it usually. Expand the actions, find the action that I want to delete, right click, delete it, and then I'll have to go back to my uh, view layer. Or I can just delete a, an action here with a single click, which is clearly better and faster. Okay, so I had some actions in this file from the start, just so that we could dive right in and I could show you the features of the add-on, but you can also use it when creating your own animations. So I'm going to delete all of these animation entries or action entries here. Click on the plus button to create a new action and press OK. 
Then go to pose mode and clear the transforms of the armature. And I can name my action from here by just double clicking. I can give it the default name and just go to frame zero and keyframe everything. And then I'll create a new action. And let's make it a leg action and I'll just select the leg um, and give it a rotation keyframe and then maybe move forward and rotate it a bit. So that is my leg action, but currently the frame range is set to zero, zero. One way to update it is to just select another action and then back to the leg action and that will update the frame range. But there is also a shortcut. I'll set end again to zero and then I can press shift F and that will update the frame range. If you go to edit preferences and find action commander under key map, you will find the refresh frame range um, setting or shortcut, which is Shift F. And as you can see, you can use it in the 3D view, dope sheet, graph editor, sequencer, and NLA. So the 3D view and all animation editors. And you also have another shortcut, which is Control, Alt, and Up Arrow, and then Down Arrow, uh, which switches between the animations here in the Action Commander. So if I press Control, Alt, and Up Arrow, I'll switch between these two animations or I can load all of my animations and just go control alt up 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 or down down and this way switch between animations. So these are the main workflows. You can load your existing actions. You can create new ones right here from the action commander interface. You can reorder your animations as well with the arrow buttons. There is a button to duplicate an action. And let's make this leg L. So duplicating the action can give you a base to work with if you have an action that is similar to your original one. So for example, here I'm trying to flip the pose, which won't work because of the naming conventions of this rig. But anyway, um, I can create it manually. Okay, so now I have the left version and right version of this action. So these are some default buttons next to your actions, but you can have even more. If you click on this icon here, you can enable a bunch of these buttons. Normally you wouldn't have all of them enabled, but let's see what they do. First, you have this selection toggle uh, and you also have a button to bake an action. So I believe the selection toggle is if you want to bake multiple actions. So select the ones that you want to bake and then click on bake this action. Duplicating, we already saw. Um, there is this play button, which I like. So this is the same as pressing the play button in the timeline, but it is right here in Action Commander. We have this button to push down the action to the NLA. So if I press it and go to the NLA, this action will be in the NLA. There is the same function here below. So personally, I'll probably disable this. Then we have a fake user button. So with one click, I can disable or enable the fake user for these actions. And fake user is generally something that you want. If you have it disabled, the animation may get deleted when you reload the file. So this is very nice to have. Then next to it, you have the number of users of this particular action which I don't find that useful, so I'm going to disable it. Then if you enable frame range, it will show you the actual frame range that will be adjusted when you select this animation. And if you press this timer next to it, which is actually manual frame range in here, you'll have to enable it if you want to use it. So if I press this button here, I can set a manual frame range for this action something like uh, 30 to 80 and then I just have to reset it and it will be playing only part of the animation. Again, to do this manually in Blender, you'll have to go to Dope Sheet, Action Editor, expand the side panel here, enable manual frame range. You can see that disabling it here will also disable it in the Action Commander interface and enabling it again enables it. And then you have to adjust the frame range in here. Again, 
This is so much nicer to do here from the Frame Ranger interface. Then we have Tags, which is a special uh, system inside Frame Ranger to organize your actions. Could be useful if you have a really huge number of actions. So here I'm tagging my run actions with run, walk actions with walk, and here I have some strafe actions, so let's tag them with walk as well. And now if I expand the search field here, and let's look for walk under name, that will only show me the actions that actually have walk in their name. But if I use the tag, that will filter all of the actions that have the walk tag and so that will also give me the strafe actions. Here is something that I love about this add-on. I'll create a new object, and you'll see that the action commander action list became empty, because each object has its own list of actions. And this alone is really cool, because if you work on multiple characters in the same scene, you want to have access to their individual actions, whereas Blender bunches everything together and it can become really messy. But what I actually wanted to show is that if I select the armature here, of course it will show me the actions, because character actions in Blender are stored on the armature itself, but if I select the character mesh, I'll still see the actions. And that is because of this target armature checkbox. If I disable it, then the mesh will have its own actions, but that is usually not what you want. The mesh is connected to the armature, so you probably want to have access to the same actions when you select the mesh. So that is very cool. Another area that you may find useful are the batch operations. So just click on this triangle here. And these are operators that will affect all actions in your action commander. So, for example, you can duplicate all, you can push all to the NLA, enable or disable fake user for all actions. Here it is in action. You can clear all actions. I'll undo. You can sort actions by name or range size. So from shortest to longest select or deselect the actions, and then bake all selected. You can batch rename tags. And I skipped some of the operators here, but one that I find very useful is import and load FBX actions. So let me clean up this file a bit. I can actually clear all actions here from the action bin. Okay, so now I don't have any actions. I'll reset this armature and then import and load FBX actions. And here I have a bunch of actions that I downloaded from Mixamo, and I know that they work with this particular armature. So I'll just select all of them and click the add FBX action button. And actually before I press the button, I should have enabled the use file name as action name setting. In a second, you'll see me manually renaming the imported actions, but this setting automates the renaming process and saves you even more time. And here are all of my actions. So this is actually how I created this uh, file that I showed you from the beginning. I just imported all of the FBX actions and then I just named them properly. So for example, I can see that this is shooting. This is another shooting animation. and so on and so forth. This is reloading and so on. And you have similar options to append or link from blend files or even append or link from multiple blend files. So I believe these are the big features in Action Commander. If you want to know everything that the add-on has to offer, you can click here on the documentation button and that will take you to the add-on manual and you can click on features and just read through all of this. I believe I covered about 70 to 80%, but there are still uh, hidden features. Some of them I honestly don't understand, like uh, pose markers. This is a bit of a hidden feature in Blender itself. So yeah, if you want to go even deeper, you can read the manual. But I believe just the features that I showed you are extremely powerful. They will speed up your workflow. And as I said, this is one of my top recommendations for people who often work with actions in Blender. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like, subscribe and check out academy.cgdive.com where you can get my advanced courses and early access to new videos.